Hi, welcome to Industrial Organization Psychology. Okay, so um, this we're going to talk about for today. I mean, for this session, rather, is job analysis and evaluation. Okay, I'm I'm still your lecturer, Angelo M. de Monteverde, and let's talk about the overview. Um, bakit malaga si job analysis? Malaga ito para ma-identify yung mga factors na kailangan natin malaman para hindi tayo next time magkamali kung ipagbabago sa company and may research, um, I mean, job description ba tayo na kailangan baguhin and yung mga other things na kailangan i-improve pa ni company. Okay, we're going to tackle those things. Um, for this overview, um, what is the importance of job analysis? Bakit siya mahalaga? Um, paano magsulat ng isang maayos na um, job description? Paano natin tayo mag-prepare ng isang job analysis? Mag-conduct ng job analysis using other job analysis? Mga methods na kailangan i-apply for um, job analysis? Um, ma-determine kung tama ba ang sinasahod ng isang supervisor, tama ba na magka-level sa supervisor sa isang rank and file, or I mean, mas mababa yung position niya. Okay? And job analysis is important for that. Determining external pay equity, meaning to say, tama ba na halimbawa sa isang BPO company, 17,000 na sinasahod ni company A na BPO, and then, yung kabila naman ay nasa 35,000. Okay? Para ma-identify kung tama ba ang pasahod na yun, aside from the um, Department of Labor and Employment, kung ano yung binibigyan niya ng datos, or pay na ano yung tama na makuha ng isang empleyado kung siya ay isang call center agent, um, kailangan, aside from that, kailangan natin ng job analysis for us to identify also. Okay? And tulad nga ng sinabi natin sa naunang lesson na um, since that um, industrial organization psychology came from federal law or from U.S., there are factors na maaring hindi applicable dito sa Philippines or maaring applicable which is the sex and race equity. Session goals and objective. At the end of this session, you should be able to, number one, understand the definition and uses of job analysis. Paano ba ito ginagawa? Ano? Paano ang tamang pagsulat ng job description? Paano ito i-conduct? Um, learn when to use various job analysis method. Understand the concept of job evaluation. Understand the concept of pay equity. All right. Um, for the reference, by the way, still Amod, um, Michael Amod, and also um, Labor Codes. By the way, this is Industrial Organizational Psychology of um, an Applied ap Approach from Michael G. Amod. All right. And all right, for the topic one, job analysis. Well, the importance of job analysis, imagine that um, it is difficult to imagine, okay? It's difficult to write a job description without job analysis. That is why it's really important, okay? So, important for job analysis, it is the foundation of all human resources, Dito tayo gumagawa ng batas because of this job analysis. Um, parang ito yung heart, okay? Um, nakapag-select tayo ng right employee and so on and so on. Nakapag- or um, revise tayo ng isang organization chart pa nagmuha ng isang rules and regulation ng isang company. And all of these things is because of job analysis. Writing job description, it is a brief two to five year page summary of the task and job requirement found in job analysis. Okay, 
for this, sabi dito na um, para makapag-conduct tayo ng proper training, HR activities, including selection, evaluation, and work design, we need to write a proper job analysis. I mean, a proper job description under of job analysis. Okay, so that's why it is important to for us to have a uh, revision and crafting kung may kailangan baguhin sa isang organization, may kailangan i-implement. And because of those things, malaki ang tulong nito ni job analysis para doon. Employee selection, proper way of selecting an employee to perform a certain task. It is difficult to select an employee unless there is a clear understanding of the task performed and competencies to perform the task. Para makita kung sino ang karapat-dapat na makuha, dapat makapag-develop ng isang test o proper interview question under job analysis. That's why malagad dito si job analysis para makapag-select tayo ng um, right employee sa isang company. Okay? So, um, malaking tulong ito para para mas ma-improve pa natin ang pagsaselect ng empleyado sa isang organization. Training. Job analysis yields list of job activities that can be systematically used to create training program. Again, napakahirap um, makita kung ang employee, employee ba ay kailangan ng training. What are the trainings na kailangan niyang i-undergo? Okay. Para makapagkanda ka ng isang magandang training or applicable na training, kailangan mo si job analysis dito. Okay. Um, example would be a pang hiring Okay, after mo i-hire si, ay, not no, pan hiring, but after mo i-hire si employee, ano ang mga basya mo na dapat, dapat mo bang i-train si employee? Ano yung mga factors na kailangan pagdaanan ni employee? And all of these things are in line sa training. And for us to conduct a good training, kailangan natin si job analysis. Okay, for person planning, person power planning rather, um, sabi natin na si, si employee dapat daw, hindi lang siya stagnant or hindi lang siya nandudun sa isang company. Dapat si employee kailangan mag-grow and as part of HR, dapat may person power planning ka. Okay, however, in line to that, kung Inangat mo sa employee, halimbawa dati siyang sales agent, nilagay mo siya bilang um, sales supervisor or mas higher position, that is the disadvantages ang papasok nito si Peter Principal. Peter Principal, ano yun? It is a promoting employees until they eventually reach their highest level of incompetence. Halimbawa na lang si, um, si salesman. May kota siya na 100, alimbawa sa isang mobile, nagbebenta siya ng um, cellphone or gadgets, nakakota siya ng 1 million a month, sabihin natin. And he's very good in sales. Tama ba na iangat ng isang HR or ng isang empleya, um, isang part ng organization, ang isang tao from HR to be a supervisor? Magagampanan niya ba yung, yung task na kung saan ay bago sa kanya? Okay? So, yun yung disadvantage neto ni person planning. Kailangan ng job analysis para makapag-conduct. Okay, kung, kung after salesman na-promote siya, ano after nun? Okay? After ba nun is baka maging officer in charge siya. Okay, after na officer in charge, conduct ng training to become um, senior of senior officer in charge, kung meron man, um, at 
bago mag-supervisor, ano ba? Okay, so kailangan natin si job analysis para um, maiwasan yung mga ganong bagay. Next, performance appraisal. Employees are often evaluated with forms that use such vague categories, dependability, knowledge, and initiative. Sometimes, um, an organization um, give an appraisal to those people na dependability, okay? Um, knowledgeable enough and always nag-initiate sa isang workplace. Tama ba na this factor ang basehan mo kung bakit ka, bakit mo tataasan ng sahod or ipopromote si isang employee? That's why we need job analysis for us to identify kung what are the things, what are the list of things na kailangan natin. Okay? Job classification, determining the worth of a job. Um, for this one, job analysis enables a human resources professional to classify jobs into groups based on similarities in requirements and duties. Job classification is useful for determining pay levels, transfers, and promotion. With this job classification, it enables um, the HR to help kung ma-determine ang pay levels nila. Also, kung kailangan ba nilang ma-transfer to the other rank or department and also ma-classify kung ano ang mga things na um, ma ma-classify yung things for promotion. Nakakatulong itong si job classification para doon sa mga bagay na yun. So, for us to conduct job classification, kailangan natin ng job analysis Kasi nga, um, kailangan natin magkaroon ng categories kung, okay, itong part na to, classify natin ang pay levels na to. Okay, so, pag si human resource ay ganun, uh, mas madali niya makaklasify yung mga ganung bagay. Okay, in regards sa... Um, job analysis. So, kailangan na kailangan si job analysis para makasify natin kung ano ang worth, kung kailangan ba siya matransfer para sa different rank or position. Kailangan din natin si job classification para malaman kung dapat na bang i-promote si employees dahil matagal na siya sa company. Ano yung mga classifications for her to be promoted? All right. Next would be job design. Determining the optimal way in which a job should be performed. Ano bang tama? Nakaupo ba si employee? Anong klaseng job design yan? Kung admin clerk ka ba, ang job design mo is nakaupo ka, may pwesto ka, or, or dapat ba gumagalaw? Example would be sa warehouse. Anong job design niya? Kailangan niya bang magbuhat doon? So, kailangan natin si job design para ma-identify kung anong klaseng um, design ng, ng isang empleyado. And then, makakatulong si job analysis para makapagkandak tayo nito. Next would be compliance with legal guidelines. Any employment decision must be based on job-related information. For compliance with legal guidelines, ano ba yung um, tamang suot ni employee? Pangkop siya dito. Um, ano ba yung mga um, regulation in line dun sa company? Okay? Si compliance with legal guidelines, pwede din ito pumasok yung mga um, example for this one, dole. So, kailangan si aligned ang isang company kay dole and or, or ano pa man, para makakapagkanda ka ng guidelines, para hindi magkaroon ng problema sa HR kapag in-inspection. So, meaning, para makapagkanda tayo ng maayos na compliance, we, compliance or legal guidelines, um, nakabase ang mga institution ito like DOLE, um, DOH, um, 
occupational um, health and safety. And for us to be able to have that, okay, meron tayong basis, makapaganda tayong rules and regulation. Um, malaking bagay dito si job analysis. For next lesson, um, chapter 3 ng IOP that you have on your handouts, mas ma-elaborate pa natin ito ng mas maigi. Okay, so next would be title. It describes the nature of a job. Job titles can also affect perceptions of the status and worth of a job. Job title can affect perception and status worth of a job. Example dito within which is HR ka na, admin ka pa. Or um, HR generalist ka ba? Or HR assistant ka ba? Um, HR associate ka ba? HR general manager ka ba? Or halimbawa naman sa iba, ay salesman ka ba? Sales clerk ka ba? Um, these are the things na makaka-affect. Okay? Kailangan natin si job analysis para ma-identify yung ano ba yung nature ng job niya. Okay? Kung maaari kasi na hindi na scope sa um, job title ng isang tao yung ginaga niya, ginagawa niyang work. Kaya kailangan natin si job analysis to identify yung correct job title niya or natures of a job niya. Next one would be brief summary. It briefly describes the nature of and purpose of a job. For this one, summary lang siya pero hindi dapat ganun haba. Brief lang. Ang summary brief ay ginagamit para sa halimbawa may brochure si company within that organization or may kailangan siyang i-promote. May mga job posting siya. For HR, para ma-identify yun ay makapagawa ka ng isang brief summary ay kailangan mo si job analysis. Next one for this one is work activities. Um, list of tasks and activities in which the workers is involved. It should be organized into meaningful categories. Ano ang mga nakapaloob sa work activities? Okay, paano nakakatulong si job analysis sa paggawa ng work activities? Halimbawa would be, ikaw ay nasa isang clerical activities. Um, ano-ano yung mga um, gagawin mo or part ng job? Pwede um, inline ka ba sa answer sa phone? Make copies of transaction for members? Draft statement of account to members? Type of certificate or deposits? Make copies of letters that are sent to members? Yung mga activities sa ginagampanan ng isang employee. Okay? And... Para ma-identify o makapagawa tayo ng tamang work activities, um, kailangan natin si job analysis. And for the other example, you may look for um, AMBOD page number 14 for other examples neto. Next is also tools and equipment used. It is used to perform the work activities in the previous section. Okay, for this one, pwede mo i-ask si applicant ano yung mga kaya niya i-operate na machine. Upon hiring or during na nandudoon na siya sa, sa company na hired na siya, maroon ba siya mag-photocopy, computer, use of computer, maroon ba siya mag-excel, PowerPoint, Word, yung mga kailangan pag nakapasok na siya sa work or mga kailangan na na things or equipment or tools kapag nandudun na siya sa work. Kailangan din ma-identify ito ng isang HR makapagsulat siya ng tama and para ka makapagsulat ng tama, kailangan mo si job analysis. Next would be work performance. It contains a relatively brief description of how an employee performance is evaluated and what work standards are expected of the employee. For this part, dapat nakasulat dito ang um, work standards 
na in-expect sa isang employee. Okay? A brief description ng dapat ang pagsuot na ito. Dapat naka-outline ano ba yung standard performance. So, dapat yung panan ni isang employee. And we're going to talk about this one to the um, ad other lessons. And for you to be able to have or to write the work performance, kailangan mo si job analysis. And compensation information, it contains information of the salary grade, whether the position is exempt, and that compensable factors used to determine salary. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, itong um, reference pattern is based on federal law. Meaning to say, there are some factors na hindi um, up, might be applicable sa atin, okay? For this one, salary grade is usually here in the Philippines ay sa mga government. Alimbawa na ito ay yung kung salary grade 1 ka, nag-reach ka ng um, 15 to 17,000, salary grade 2, um, 17,100 to 19,000. Okay, para ma-identify mo yung salary grade. Okay, iba kasi ang tawag natin sa um, government. Meron sa, silang salary grade na tinatawag. Um, para ma-identify mo yung kailangan mo si job analysis. Okay, and next is job competencies. It contains what are commonly called job specification or competencies. These are the knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics that are necessary to be successful on a job. Okay. With these job competencies, may tinatawag tayong keisaw o yung uh, sabi, knowledge, skills, abilities, and other characteristics. Ang keisaw ay combination ng logic, research, and use of specific in so, and also, we're going to discuss this in the next um, slides. Ano ba ang KSAW? Para saan ang KSAW? Okay, and for you to be able to um, have this job competencies, which is in line or under ng KSAW, kailangan natin si job analysis para makapaggawa nito. Next is, who will conduct the job analysis? Sino ba yung mga taong dapat mag-conduct ng isang Job analysis. Ito yung mga trained individuals, okay, na na part ng human resource department or ng HR department. Um, as I mentioned, it's conducted by trained individuals in the human resource or HR department. How often should a job description be updated? Okay. Um, job description should be updated if a job changes significantly. Meaning to say, for this one, um, kung may nabago tayo, may nabago sa isang policy, may nabago sa isang um, workload ng isang employee, kailangan ma-update ito agad. Okay. Para... If in case na makapag-hire ka ng employee, bagong employee, maia-align mo itong job analysis na to. Okay? Ma-update mo siya agad. Alright? Mayroon din tayong tinatawag na job crafting, the informal changes that employees make in their job. In line to this, sa job crafting, It is common for employees to quietly expand the scope of their job to add tasks they want to perform and to remove tasks that they don't want to perform. With this job crafting, halimbawa sa employees is unable to operate something or nakita mo sa isang job analysis na hmm, hindi pa lakaya ng isang HR assistant na mag-conduct mag or gumawa ng isang video para sa isang promotion or magkaroon ng isang system, hindi niya kaya mag-operate ng isang system, video job crafting mo yun. Okay, aalisin mo yung mga, this is an informal changes sa isang um, job position. Okay, kailangan natin yun para um, sa para mas maayos yung workflow 
ng isang individual. So, job crafting ang tawag doon. At para tayo makapagawa ng isang job crafting or kailangan nasus um, kailangan isang malaking guide natin si job analysis. Which employee should participate? It depends on whether the job analysis will be committee or field based. Ibig sabihin, this or yung mga tao na knowledgeable enough sa paggawa nito. Kailangan din natin masalang ala yung race. Okay? With regards to race, um, sasabi ni sa book ni Amod, for example, na yung mga tao na mga police officers na nag ay kayang mag-administer ng first aid, okay? And then yung other race naman na police officer, hindi kaya mag-administer ng first aid. Also, educational level, it's kasama din siya doon. It's because of yung, there is a study na yung mga tao daw na may high school diploma were less involved in court activities than were their more educated counterparts. Okay? So, kailangan makita din ito doon. And for us to be able, we need to conduct job analysis. Personality. Different personality ng isang employee ay nakaka-apekto sa paggawa ng isang task. Alimbawa dito, if you are introvert or extrovert, there are certain Miss of task na kaya mong gampanan and also viewpoint. Viewpoint in regards of um, hindi iba or ayaw, hindi naman sa ayaw, ngunit um, iba sa paniniwala mo, yung ginagawa mo. And for you to become, and for the, uh, for, for be able to conduct a good type of work or makapag-work ka ng tama, dapat in line yung yung viewpoint mo sa company and yung viewpoint mo sa sarili mo. Okay? So, kailangan natin neto, it's for us to be able or kailangan ng isang HR to to be able to to measure these things. Next. What type of information should be obtained? Ano, ano ba yung mga information na kailangan natin makuha? It should be specific. Job analysis break a job down into very many specific behaviors or analyze at the more general level. Okay, so job analysis must be a specific. Dapat hindi siya vague or hindi nag-overlap or intervene yung isang job analysis for you to be able to conduct. Okay, so dapat malinaw ang job analysis. Um, conducting job analysis. Um, here, we have now step-by-step -step process paano natin conduct si job analysis. And first is to identify the task performance. Um, gathering existing information. Alimbawa, for this one is na gather mo na, na identify mo na yung isang empleyado hindi niya pala kayang gumawa or hindi in scope sa kanya or wala siyang kakayang gumawa ng isang bagay. Alimbawa sa HR, um, assistant, pinagawa mo siya about um, system and nag-gather mo yung information na yun. Okay? Ang gagawin mo ngayon is to ay, ay na-identify mo yun. Ang gagawin mo ngayon is kukumpile mo lahat ng information na yun. Next would be interviewing subject matter expert or SME. Ano ba ang SME or subject matter expert? Ito yung mga tao na expert yun sa job. It could be supervisor, it could be um, coordinator. And itong job, uh, sorry, itong subject matter expert ay pwede sila mag-conduct ng interview to um, individual employee. Okay, so kailangan nagko-consult tayo sa mga SME uh, also. If we are in HR, consulting natin sa SME na ano ba yung mga kaya ni employee, ano yung hindi. Okay, that is under gathering existing information. We have individual. Itong SME, pwede siya mag-conduct ng one-on-one -on -one interview. Not an interview, but to have a survey kung 
nagagampan ng ba na employee yung, or kaya ba ng employee yung isang certain job? Next, pwede din group. Pwede si SME mag-conduct siya ng isang interview or mag-conduct siya ng isang um, pagpupulong na bakit nahihirapan si employee, ano yung mga mga things na dapat in-scope sa kanila at saka out of scope. Ito yung inline doon. Next is also Identify task performance kasama dito. Regardless of whether individual or group interviews are used, certain guidelines should be followed that will make the interview go more smoothly. Okay, under interview, uh, interviewing SME, dapat prepare ka sa mga itatanong. Open ka for suggestion from your employee and you should know how to conduct as well. Observing incumbent. Okay. For observing, observing incumbent um, during job analysis, um, tinitingnan yung mga incumbent kung paano nila um, gawin ang isang task. Okay? Yung isang job. The advantage of this, it, it lets the job analyst actually see the worker to do her job and thus update information that the worker may have forgotten to mention during interview. Okay, so magandang tinitingnan mo ang isang employee kung paano mo or ano ang ginagawa nila kung marunong ba sila sa certain task na yun. Okay, yun yung advantage ng pag-observe sa mga incumbent ay yung mga tao na gumagawa ng task. Okay, the one who is responsible for the certain task. However, it has a disadvantage. It is obtrusive. Observing someone without their knowing is difficult. Meaning to say, ibig sabihin, um, may mga tao na kapag tinitingnan nila, tinitingnan sila, alam nila may nakatingin sa kanila na kung paano gawin ang task, ay maaaring makonsyos sila, okay? Um, mahirapan sila makapag-perform ng isang task. Ganun siya. So, meaning, um, kung alam mo na inaobserve ang ka ng isang tao, maaaring um, makonsyos ka sa ginagawa mo or maaaring din naman na um, counterpart nito ay galingan mo tapos sa certain job hindi, hindi mo siya ma-perform kapag wala na nag-observe sa'yo. Okay, maging substandard ka, hindi na standard yung ginagawa mo. Next would be job participation. Okay, for this job participation, we have, since na ikaw yung nag-observe ng isang certain task, okay, alam mo kung paano siya gawin, okay? So, um, alam mo kung paano yung flow, alam mo kung paano ang substandard, kung tama ba, kasi you yourself as a uh, um, subject matter expert or the one who knows how to perform it well, makikita mo din kung paano ang ginagawa ng isang incumbent sa kanyang ginagawa, kung may mali ba or tama. Or kung ano yung mga key points sa pwede mong may apply pa sa kanya. Next would be, write task statements. Okay. Once the task have been identified, the next step is to write the task statements that will be used in the task inventory and include in the job description. For this one, may record mo kung uh, how it is done. Okay? Where it is done. Okay? Yung sa task inventory, um, na, um, dito makikita kung paano ba ginawa, okay? Or paano niya in-administer or paano niya uh, pinarform yung isang certain task. Okay? Sa task inventory. And we have job analysis para makatulong sa paglagay or pag-improve ng task inventory. Next, conducting job analysis. Step number three, read task statements. Once the task statements have been written, the next step is to conduct task analysis. Read by having the frequently 
and importance. Meron tayong certain task questionnaire na kung saan uh, ma-align natin ang isang certain task kung tama ba, pwede itong scaling. Halimbawa, um, nag-perform si employee ng gantong bagay, tama ba or hindi, then you're going to rate that one. Yun yung factor na kasama sa task analysis. Also, we have step number four, determining case house. Best method to top case house needed at the time of hire. Meaning to say, ito yung mga competencies nila. Okay, so, um, himayin natin ang bawat isa na case house. Number one would be knowledge. It is a body of information needed to perform the task. Ibig sabihin, uh, meron ba siyang kaalaman para mag-perform din sa task? Si skills naman is a proficiency to perform a learned task. Kaya niya bang gawin? Ability is a basic capacity for performing a wide range of different tasks acquiring a knowledge or developing skills and other characteristics include such personality, willingness, interest, and motivation, such ta tangible factors as license, says degrees, and years of experience. Ito dapat ang tiyatap ng mga subject matter expert, okay? Sa so, paggawa nila ng, ng um, pag-determine nila ng essential case sales. Ano ba ang mga knowledge dapat ni employee na, na meron sila? Ano yung skills nila? Ability nila that they possess and other characteristic are they willing, willing to learn for that one? to improve themselves also na motivation nila and ano yung mga licenses and degrees and years of experience na kailangan natin ma mahanap sa next employees. Since that, um, job analysis is conduct, uh, uh, needs to be conduct para makapagselect tayo ng new participants, may proven training, kailangan ma-identify natin pong case also. Okay. Now, next slide would be identify task performance. Um, for selecting test to top cases needed at the time of hire, interview. Okay, um, during that interview, um, dapat alam natin kung tatanungin natin yung isang employee kung kaya niya bang gawin tong certain task na to, hindi niya ba kaya, or sasalain natin siya. Work samples, bibigyan natin siya ng nang sige nga kung um, kung talaga magaling ka sa gantong bagay pakitaan mo nga kami or paano mo gagawin ang isang routine kung machinery yan paano mo paano ka magpatakbo ng isang makina ability test we conduct also personality test okay mahalaga din siya and reference check para malaman natin kung may background ba sa na hindi ginawa itong employee nito sa previous work niya Integrity test, mapapagkatiwalaan, biodata, per se. Um, kailangan, kailangan, kasi doon nakalagay yung mga list. And assessment centers, kung nag-train ba ito sa, itong employee na to sa ibang um, department, ano yung mga natutunan niya, um, ano yung mga seminars na inattend. Also, for the next one, Methods providing information about tools and equipment. Okay, for job component inventory, um, it is a kind of test. <clears throat> okay, it's a kind of test na kung saan um, ma makukuha natin kung ano yung component ng isang certain task. Okay, it could be Anong klaseng test yan na i-administer mo or anong klaseng tools yan na i-administer mo? Dapat ba um, kapag clerical ang work, um, maroon sa computer, ano yung mga component mo? Okay. Wala tayong sample ng job component inventory. However, mm, ganun siya. Ganun siya explain kung ano yung mga task na dapat meron ang isang admin, ano yung, kung kailangan ba nila um, mag-process ng paper, kailangan ba nila mag-documents? Yun yung job inventory, component ng inventory. Next, number four, methods provide information about competencies. Occupational information network or ONET. For this ONET, 
ginagamit siya para malaman ang nature ng isang job. Okay? We also have critical incident technique. Halimbawa, bibigyan mo na sa um, not a, um, situational ang isang employee. What if ganti yung mangyari sa isang task? Okay? Anong gagawin mo? Okay, yun siya. And job component inventory, we discussed that one. Threshold traits analysis, threshold trait analysis, threshold job analysis survey, job adaptability inventory, um, personality related position required. Okay, these are the tests na kinakanda sa upon hiring or kahit na doon na si employee sa certain type of work. Um, topic number two, job evaluation. Um, process of determining a job work. Okay. For this one, um, tama ba na i-evaluate natin si employee si gantong paraan? Okay. Tama ba na taasan natin si employee kung nagagawa niya itong isang bagay na to? Tama ba na kapag matagal na si employee, evaluate mo siya, appraise mo siya? Okay. Yung ba yung level mo sa pagkuha or sa pag-evaluate um, ng employee? Kailangan malaman natin siya na sa akin. And, That is why um, makakatulong ang job analysis or after mo job analysis is evaluate ng employees. Determining internal pay equity. When you see the determining um, pay equity, ito yung ang sahod ba ni HR assistant ay parehas ng sahod ni HR associate. Si HR associate ba parehas ng sahod ni ni HR generalist. Sa HR generalist ba, para sa sahod ng HR supervisor. Okay? So, with that internal pay equity, ito yung sa loob ng organization. Okay? You are comparing, um, you are identifying, okay, kung magkano yung sahod ng isang employee depending sa job evaluation nila. Okay? And job classification. The, also, step number, determining compensable job factors. Okay? Level of responsibility. Pag ba mas madami ang level of responsibility mo, mas mataas ang sahod mo, ano yung mga physical demands na kailangan i-identify mo sa pagbibigay ng sahod? Okay? O yung mag-determine ng, compensa, um, com ng compensation. Third, education requirements. Um, pag ba tapos ka ng four-year course, same kayo ng ng sahod ng high school graduates. Also, mental demands. Mas overload ba ang work? Training experience requirements. Kapag ba mas madami ang experience mo, mas mataas, dapat ang salary mo. Um, working conditions. Also, kung, kung mas risky ang isang um, working environment ng tao, dalagyan ba natin siya ng hazard pay? Like, um, siguro, construction worker or frontliner. Ganun siya. And step number two, determining compensable job factors. For this one, after identifying nung yung pag-select, okay, pag-determine ng levels, ito na yung susunod. Determine natin kung yung compensable job factors. Okay, ano-ano yung mga job factors na kailangan mo recognize after writing Then sa step number one. And step number three would be determining the weight or gaano kabigat yung isang task na yun or yung isang ginagawa ng employee. Using salary survey, this survey asks how much an organization pays its employees in various positions. Okay? So, <clears throat> for external pay equity naman, Ginagawa natin to para malaman natin kung magkano bang ibinibigay ng isang organization sa employee for the specific position. Halimbawa dito BPO agent. Okay. Halimbawa lang ha, um, si Alorica, which is sikat ngayon, bakit ang dami nag-work sa Alorica? Tapos ang dami nag, um, unti ang nag-work sa CVG, halimbawa ganun, or sa Converges or Concentrics. Ang gagawin mo is identify mo magkano ba ang bigay nito sa kabilang company. Okay, para ma-identify mo or matapatan mo or baka mamaya ma mataasa mo kung para makakuha ka ng 
mas madaming employees. Okay? Siyempre, kung sa isang organization, onti lang o malit lang yung sahada ng kuwan nila, they're going to jump or magkakaroon ng attrition or maaaring hindi sila mag-apply dun sa company kasi ay ito lang yung nakuha. Uh, ito lang yung bigayan dito sa kabilang company. Okay? Yun yung ex determining external pay equity. Gag gagamit kayo ng salary survey, is survey mo kung magkano ba binibigay sa McDo, magkano ibinibigay sa Jollibee, baka para mas madami tayong ma-recruit, eh baka, um, baka maaaring taas na natin sa ad, or e on, either way, bigyan natin siya ng benefits, ang isang employee na mas mataas compared din sa kabilang company. Next one would be direct compensation. Employees are also compensated in other ways such as pay for time, not work, example, holidays, vacation, sick leaves, Okay, for this one, um, sa direct compensation, ito yung mga bagay na magko-compensate sa tao kapag hindi sila pumasok sa isang work. Halimbawa, holidays. Um, sa external factors, uh, magkano ba yung binibigay kapag holidays? Though may sinusunod tayo dito sa batas, dito here in the Philippines, magkano ang vacation at ilang ba dapat ang sick leave or meron ba talaga? For deferred income naman, um, social security, and pension plans, yung other perks pa, kung nag-offer yan ng kotse, um, ibinibigay mo yan sa employee. Okay, so kailangan ma-determine natin kung what are the perks, what are the things sa kailangan natin ma-offer or may offer natin sa si employee also. Para maybe they can stay longer or hindi sila umalis at hindi sila matrack sa iba or maaaring um, mas madami pa yung may kahit natin na tao. Next, um, determining a sex and race equity. For this one, um, since that this is federal, um, comparable words and issue very much related to the discussion of job evaluation. Meaning to say, um, yung determining sex and race equity, there are certain um, cases kasi na kapag mas mabigat ang loads or workload ng isang lalaki in US, eh, mas mataas ng sahod nila compare dun sa female. Okay? Race equity, halimbawa, ikaw ba ay pag African daw, ganto, ganto ang, ganto sila magtrabaho. Pag American, ganto sila magtrabaho. Um, we're going, um, kailangan natin malaman yung comparable of work nila. Okay, conducting a sex and race equity study. Okay, kasi may sinabi sabi sa study na kapag daw ganito yung lahi mo, is ganito daw magtrabaho yung mga gantong lahi. Okay, not to mention those kung anong um, race siya, maybe you could um, browse doon sa reference book natin. Hindi, <clears throat> not necessarily applicable to sa Philippines because of um, equal naman. Meron naman tayong batas para doon. Alright, so that's all for this lesson. If you have question, you may reach me up during synchronous or asynchronous time. So, bakit mahalaga si job evaluation? It's really important for us to be able to know um, job analysis and job evaluation rather. It's for us to be able to know kung Ano yung mga certain qualities na kailangan natin improve? Ano yung mga job crafting ilagay na ilalagay natin sa isang empleyado, ibabawas natin, and then sa isang empleyado, ano yung mga idadagdag natin? Paano tayo magde-determine ng, ng salary ng employee? Maybe it could be um, internal and ex external equity. I-compare natin yung workloads nila. And for this, para... Uh, magawa yun na mabuti, kailangan natin yung job, um, para magawa or ma-improve, kailangan natin mag-conduct ng job analysis. Okay.